Greetings, theists and non-theists. I'm the Atheist Pal. Guess who replied to my video? That's right. Crazy316. I'm going to rip him a new one. Um, now, he replied a little dinky video to mine and basically replied to each of my comments. But to properly do justice, I'm going to actually debunk his uh, second reply to Jay-Z. Because in that, it's it, his comments are linked to that, so might as well go to the source, right? So he, it's a veritable gold mine of ignorance and tomfoolery and all this. And um, so I'm just right now, I'm going to concentrate just on the slide report and later on I'll get to all the other also oh, priceless statements that he makes and um, so let's get this started so the first thing that was quoted at him was Leviticus 25 44 through 46 so obviously he didn't read uh, that part because it directly states that those people that you purchase or that you take from the nations around you are to be your property for a lifetime. And now if uh, he actually read the whole thing in context and he would have seen the following verses, he would have seen something like uh, you can sell, buy or sell a Hebrew into, not slavery, but it's indentured servitude. The thing is, is that the same words are using as servant or maid servant or bond servant they're all they're all used the same, so I'll give them just a little bit of leeway uh, for that confusion. But what Crazy does not understand is that there is a difference between indentured servitude and slavery. Slavery, by definition, is forced. Okay. But indentured servitude. So he's trying to say the Bible's not all that bad because it'll. It regulates indentured servitude. Well, it regulates both indentured servitude and slavery. So, um, you still have nowhere to go with this crazy. And the thing is, is he does not understand this difference. Not at all. Zero. Not up. And so he's trying to say, oh, the Bible's better because, because of this. Even let's let's argue that somehow that slavery in the Bible is better than the uh, than it was in the Americas in the, in, in the colonial times in the Civil War time. Even if we give him that argument, the lesser of two evils is still evil. Okay. So now understanding that there are some things that regulate indentured servitude and some things that regulate um, slavery, we can now understand these verses in context. And that's uh, so either Crazy does not read the context of the verses, or he does not understand the context of the verse. He just does not doesn't understand the verse itself. And that's his biggest problem. So, uh, we can go to Exodus 1, or Exodus 21, because that's where the, the majority of the dispute is. And to support this idea that slavery is somehow wrong, he quotes verse 16. He that stealeth a man, selleth him, and is found at his hand, shall be surely put to death. Finding the context of this particular verse is hard because it's sandwiched in between um, to honor thy father and mother type of commandments. If you hit him, you shall be put to death, and then if you curse your father and mother, you should be put to death. So the uh, the context of this is is not easily to be found. But again, if we go, if we read it within the conjunction of Leviticus, again we see that the fact. If a man is just taking a Hebrew person, then this is the situation. This is the most likely, the most likely interpretation because, again, there are many if unequivocal points which states that if, as long as they're not Israeli or uh, ancient Hebrew, you know, they're, they're from the nations around you, 
that are heathen, you can just go ahead and take them. Go ahead and make, make them your slaves. There are many unequivocal things about that. So then he tries to go to First uh, Timothy, verse ten, and uh, and trying to as as the New Testament. Uh, so for whoremongers that defile themselves with mankind, for man stealers, liars. So basically, this is part of the New Testament, which uh, states basically a list of sins. For man stealers, that it actually uh, the word is uh, to bring a man to his feet or to his foot. There's a lot of suggestion that this is enslavement, but according to Blue Letter Bible, it says one who unju unjustly reduces a free man to slavery, one who steals the slaves of others and sells them. So either they're, according to this, this and this word is only used once, so we have no idea really uh, to get. To get to get the full context of how the Bible is using it, as you you see. So somebody who steals the slaves of others, or takes you know, if I go down to the mall and steal someone there and then sell them to slavery, this is the most likely the context. Again, this is the most likely the cultural context to which it was referring to. So crazy. Uh, again, this is not a unequivocal. Uh, declaration that slavery is outright bad. This is referring to again a particular situation. So let's go on to Deuteronomy 15 through 18. Okay. Thou shalt not deliver his uh, unto his master the servant to which he escaped from his master. So he's saying if a person is uh, being abused, they can run away. But the thing is, um, it doesn't say that. As long as the servant runs away from his master, we, we don't know the context. But even then, again, the, the situation here of it's, uh, the, as, as the Bible quotes off laws that you should follow, it's, it's never straightforward sections. It's always... Talking about this one second, always about that and another. So, again, is this a situation where you're supposed to release them because of abuse? One cannot say. There aren't any things that, that clearly state anything about being escaped from abuse or that this is a situation particularly about slavery. This could be a, an indentured servitude sort of um, scenario. So we don't know. Uh, Philemon, 